Welcome back. We're almost to the release video, just another day. Uh, I wanted to share some of my uh, thoughts about the upcoming release, some of my hopes for the new bike, some concerns that I have. Wanted to put it all in one video and, and release it just before the actual release. So we'll see what I predict here comes true. Let's take a look. Here she is, the 2023 CVO Road Glide, at least what we believe is going to be the 2023 CVO Road Glide. Uh, a lot of things we've talked about. I won't go over some of the obviouses, but a, a couple of things that are on my mind. The first thing on my mind is the price. So this is Harley Davidson's website for the previous model year. And uh, for the 2022 CVO Road Glide, the base price was $41,899. They have a custom color, but I don't know if there was a custom color. CVOs are all custom color, but $41,899. And then uh, if, you, if you live in California, you pay your EPA there, but uh, freight $750. And then this surcharge continues to show up. A surcharge of $1,200 apparently for the cost of materials during the, all the limitations during COVID. They started adding this surcharge. Will we still see a surcharge here in the 2023 release? I probably guess so, but it'd be nice to see it go away. So those are the prices for the current uh, for 2022. So how how far will the price go up? I think if they go too far from what the 2022 year was, they will certainly disappoint many of their CVO fans. So I think they're going to have to stay closer to the space pricing, but time will tell here. I'd love to make a guess here, but frankly, I have no idea, right? A couple other specs here. Let's talk about the uh, a couple numbers here. The weight, 893 pounds was the uh, 2022 model. Is the bike going to be lighter or heavier or the same? And as part of me thinks we may shave a little weight, um, but it'll be really interesting to see what this number produces. Um, we are expecting that mono shock. So in this picture of the, of the street glide, really believe that this is an adjustment knob for the mono shock. And I'm pretty excited about that. One of the biggest disappointments of the current road glides is that stock suspension. It's just really not comfortable, and we expect a, a touring bike, especially in one of this price level, to be comfortable. And the suspension really falls short. It looks great. The bike looks great. The stance, is, you could say, is perfect because it's only got 4.3 inches of ground clearance, but you really give up the comfort. So I'm not hoping something. I'm really hoping that we're going to see an improvement here uh, with this bike. Okay, let's talk about um, the uh, windshield. So the, the windshield, we believe, is adjustable. Um, we, we've uh, seen the knob or up here, uh, or the, and the mounting shows that it goes up. I'm pretty sure what we're looking at here is a manual adjustment. So for the first time, you'll be able to adjust the, the height of your windshield on your road glide uh, motorcycle which is which is exciting only if it works if we if we still have to run out and buy a taller windshield to get any uh, wind protection for a, especially a taller rider then that's going to be pretty disappointing so I have high hopes that this adjustment will uh, make a difference in that wind wind buffeting and uh, something I don't have to go out and buy immediately after getting the bike to, to avoid it I am okay with a manual adjustment. I do believe it's a manual adjustment. I think that is gonna be much more reliable, a uh, lot less failure opportunity. And frankly, I think once I set it in the higher position, most likely, I'm just gonna leave it there. I really doubt that I would actually adjust it. So I, I do hope it's adjustable. I do hope it makes a difference. Uh, and if it doesn't, I think it'll be disappointing if you have to still go out and buy a, a windshield. Another another uh, big uh, interest here is the motor and the sound of it. So we know this motor has variable valve timing. A lot of pictures have indicated that. It's, and it's pretty clear that the VVT stands for variable valve timing. Uh, whether it has a performance gain or not, I think there's a lot of debate. Um, 
I don't really care whether VVT adds performance or not. I'm just looking at the performance of the whole engine, but I do want it to sound nice. I think that the Milwaukee 8 has been a struggle for me. It does sound like a sewing machine. And uh, until you get that exhaust opened up or you really turn up your stereo, it, it doesn't sound like what I am used to, at least from, a, from the Harley world. I'm used to the ticking sound, the twin cam that was very traditional sound and some of the older uh, motors all have that ticking sound. Uh, you can't get away from it. I know the EPA is really pushing these manufacturers on, on decibel levels and uh, I'm not a fan of the sewing machine. So will it will at least sound the same as a Milwaukee 8 or will it sound worse? That That's something I'm for sure thinking about. All right, my next... Uh, Next engine concern is oil cooling. So I made some thoughts that this could be a, a liquid cool motor. This is the picture that really shows uh, what we're looking at here. I do believe this tube here is filled with oil. I don't think it's a radiator. If we look in the front here, there's no radiator space here. Um, if we look down, you can see through um, the oil cooling vent holes here, it does not look like there's a radiator there. So I do believe this is air cooled, but it is interesting, this design, right? So are they putting oil in this chamber here on the side? Is that what that is? And uh, does that just help with the oil cooling? There's also this coming out of the uh, side here and uh, not sure if that is a voltage regulator or something else, but that's definitely something that we've not seen before in the motor. So I do believe it's gonna be oil cooled. That is my hope. I really am not interested in, in liquid cooling until I have to, call me old, but uh, it's just a hope I have. All right, next topic. Let's talk about hand controls. So the hand controls clearly indicate a lot of buttons. These are the hand controls on my current CVO. Now, you can admit that, you know, not many years ago, there were way fewer buttons than this on a Harley, but uh, there's not too many here, and I've been a big fan of this joystick. I really thought the joystick has worked well. I have no need to touch the screen. I don't care if it's a touch screen or not, because I've never touched it. I just use these, uh, these thumb, thumb uh, joysticks, and it allows me to keep my hands on the, on the handlebars, and they work really well. The buttons are solid. They click really nice. There's nothing plasticky about the buttons. And I'm really hoping the, that remains true on the new bike. But we already know there's quite a few buttons. Will that just be frustrating as you're uh, going down the road and trying to do something and then you uh, look down and then you're dead would be the, uh, the concern there. They do appear to be uh, illuminated in the pictures. So that's great. Uh, definitely a lovely illuminated buttons and didn't realize how much I enjoyed them until I had them here with the CVO. Uh, if you ride at night at all, it's, it's a nice feature, especially when you have so many buttons, you can see uh, where they go. My, uh, my other uh, one that I bring up here was this, this cockpit here. So I think the cockpit of the uh, current Road Glide is just amazing. I think Harley really nailed this design they were messing with history when they redesigned it in uh, 2015, and they, they really did a great job. When you sit on this bike, and this is what you're looking at, it is a pleasing view. Um, I really enjoy it. I do enjoy the gauges. The, <clears throat> the gauges on the CVO are always a bit upgraded and uh, a little better quality than what comes stock, and I've really enjoyed this cockpit. So with this new modern cockpit and all electronic and all screen am i going to miss these gauges i don't know we'll see the screen does look very good it looks like very good detail and being a geek i do appreciate access to a lot of information about you know what's the current oil temperature and pressure and what's the altitude that could be fun but again looking at that too much you'll end up dead so uh not not the intent of having all that info but uh, when you're going down the, down the, a lonely road by yourself and you're uh, wanting to know some, some information about the bike, that might be nice. I think the resolution's good. Will it work in the sun? I'm not sure. These gauges do work pretty well for me in the sun. I don't have too much uh, challenge uh, uh, reading it. But this cockpit view I've grown very accustomed to. 
I really hope that the new one delivers as well as this one does. Okay, chrome finish. So we know there are two finishes uh, for each model. The CVO um, Street Glide and the CVO Red Glide is going to be offered in two finishes. So we know it's the silver, uh, the different sh uh, shades of gray and silver. And we do know the exhaust is that black chrome on that from the, their own picture. But we've not seen a, a great full photo of the uh, second offering other than this one. So this one clearly shows the orange and the gray fade, which is which held true in Harley's uh, video. And they show it here clearly with a chrome exhaust and a chrome crash guard. Uh, you know, I get it. Bring some chrome back. A lot of people are moving back to chrome. Uh, I've really enjoyed an all blacked out bike. It, the finish is much harder to keep up on for sure, um, but it's a look that I've enjoyed. So if this comes out with the chrome exhaust and the chrome crash guard, as we see here, I'll probably look to change that out. At least there are two parts that I could change. I think this would look better with a black chrome exhaust, but if I replace the header, you know, I'll probably end up with just the black. And then the crash guard, maybe I'll find someone with the takeoff one uh, to uh, save some money, but that could get expensive to change that out. Okay, a couple last couple hopes here. Let's talk about um, this uh, crazy shifter linkage. All right, so this is on my uh, 2023. You can see I'm going to jiggle it here. My 2023. Or 2018 CVO Road Glide, correct me there. But this thing wiggles and it is so sloppy and has always been that way on every touring Harley I've ever owned. And I just don't understand why this has never been resolved. And I actually put a little extra bushing on the on the touring bikes as I've owned them. I just take a, a little, a, a little um, rubber washer and stick it in there. And that's made a significant difference, but it is still really sloppy. And these things fail. As every anyone who's owned a terrain bike know, these strip and fail. And if you let it go long enough, you're riding along, and then suddenly you don't have any shifter peg to change gears on. And uh, I, mine fell off once on a street glide, and Lucky got caught in the floorboard. So I was able to pull over and just pull the clutch in and kill the motor. And uh, fortunately, my shifter peg was hanging uh, in the floorboard and I was able to get it back on there and get home. But uh, what a pain, right? And I cannot believe this has never been addressed. Um, the photos of the new bikes doesn't really indicate that it's gonna be fixed or at least redesigned, but boy, that would be nice to see that finally resolved. And uh, one last complaint that's been there for a long time with the since the 2014 Project Rushmore bike is this crazy, accessory port so it's a you know a cigarette lighter uh dc adapter and this crazy cover that they put on there just continually pops out uh i've seen some great uses for the space i know there's a, a veteran that started a business where you can uh, replace that with a garage door opener button really would like to see that too in a modern bike right be able to open your garage door with all that screen and all those buttons maybe there'll be a way to open it but if not maybe we'll see a newer version um the, of this that the uh that we can buy and and change out and and uh, have a garage door opening capability but this crazy little uh plug is ridiculous we are almost to the eve of this release what are we going to see are we ready for it I am very excited and uh, nervous and uh, hopeful, um, but it's going to be a big leap for Harley Davidson. This this motorcycle, the Street Glide and the Road Glide, is clearly key to their business. And uh, if, if if riders find it too modern or uh, it's, it's too buggy, it's going to be a big detriment to the company. So there's a lot riding on it. Brad Richards, who uh, apparently designed the bike, or at least a big hand in it, according to the video, he's got to be a little nervous uh, the night before the release. Uh, so we're, uh, we all want it to go well, I think. I think many of uh, the comments I read in, in other videos, and you see a lot of negative comments about Harley, I think the Harley rider wants to love the brand. 
We want the bike to live up to our expectations and we want it to be successful and we want to own one and enjoy it and have gr these great experiences. So we want to love that brand, but I think it's very difficult for them to meet the expectations of everyone. We all have a different view of what Harley is. We all have a different uh, you know, belief of what Harley means to us as individuals. And that's a pretty tall order. I think Harley's gonna make a lot of right moves with this bike. We're gonna see a lot of improvements in performance and uh, specifically handling, which I think is outstanding. Um, there'll be a lot of modern on this bike. Uh, is that a good thing? I just don't know yet. That's the big question mark. So it's gonna be interesting to see. So I encourage you to join me. Obviously we'll be uh, watching the videos with you and then I'll uh, post a, a video right after that and we'll talk about what, we, what came true. And then uh, hopefully shortly after that, we'll have one here in the garage that we can uh, play with and you can post your questions and what you wanna know and I'll do my best to answer it. Um, I do love to take the motorcycles apart. So that'll be one of the things I want to do for sure. I want to get that fairing off and see what it looks like behind there. How's, what's that screen look like? What's the real estate look like back there? And uh, we'll probably try to take that cam cover off and see what that variable valve timing uh, mechanism looks like. Unless they give us a great photo of it, that would save me uh, having to buy the gasket to put it back on. But I do want to take the bike apart and and uh, go after those things that we may not hear from Harley Davidson that, that might concern us. So excited for the opportunity to share with this with you. Really appreciate the support that I've received from all of you on the channel thus far. It's been a lot of fun for me. Uh, I certainly took a, uh, a lot of risk of just starting making YouTube videos. I have no intent to be uh, a big time YouTuber or make money at all from this. It's really just something I wanted to contribute back to the community, um, and I appreciate you very much. So until the next time, in the Friction Zone.